From our studios at the corner of 8th and Walton and Bentonville, Arkansas, welcome to Saturday Morning Meeting, brought to you in part by Dun & Bradstreet Credibility Corporation. Saturday Morning Meeting covers Walmart, Sam's Club, and the consumer product companies that are represented on the racks and shelves throughout the country and around the world. I'm Derek Reidenauer, and our focus is on the insights, trends, and best practices to help you as a supplier grow your business with the world's largest retailer. Thank you for joining us, and today we'll be talking with Vic Miles, the Director of Retail Technology Strategy at Microsoft. And joining me for the headline discussion will be Andy Shook and Ken Simpson. But first, the headlines. Walmart Chinese operations drew worldwide attention this past week as it revealed that some of the donkey meat snacks sold at the stores actually contained fox meat. Bloomberg reports that Walmart recalled all products by the supplier of the meat snacks and will perform additional DNA tests on meat products. Did Walmart misjudge holiday sales this year? Mashable.com recently posted video taken the day after Christmas by Brian Sazi, CEO and Chief Equity Strategist at Bellis Capital Advisors. It shows shelves at Walmart stores overflowing with Christmas items. Sazi claims that Walmart uncharacteristically overordered holiday items this year, while cash-strapped Walmart moms used last year's Christmas leftovers instead of buying new holiday supplies. Walmart said last week that it will provide 30 days supplies of prescription drugs to individuals who recently purchased, purchased health insurance but who have not yet received identification cards. Walmart pharmacies will be working with insurers to make sure that customers are able to get their prescriptions filled whether or not the customer has documentation of insurance coverage. The Sullivan Journal recently documented the run on groceries that took place in many Midwestern stores, including Walmart, prior to the recent polar vortex. The predicted deep freeze caused many shoppers to stock up on grocery basics, including bread, which left local store shelves empty. Comfort food lovers across the United States are uncomfortable. It's been reported that there may be a nationwide shortage of Velveeta cheese. KRMG reports that unspecified manufacturing issues have contributed to a shortage of the processed cheese that is much prized for adding flavor and texture to dips, toppings, and other homespun dishes. But take heart, the shortage is expected to last only through February. Credit Donkey, a personal finance site, recently selected the 10 best U.S. counties for workers and Benton County, home of both Bentonville and Rogers, came in at number two. The article cited Benton County's low unemployment rate, high wages, and proximity to Walmart headquarters, as well as the manufacturing operations of major retail brands such as Glad and Johnson & Johnson. Good reasons to consider a move to Northwest Arkansas. Check out Walmart and Supplier News as it's reported on walmartnewsnow.com. And we're joined now by our panel, Ken Simpson from Clorox and Andy Shook from the Harvest Group. Welcome, guys. A lot of big stories in the news this week. Uh, the biggest one, Walmart's going to begin do DNA testing on meat in China because apparently fox meat is not what they want <laughs> donkey meat is. So, Ken, let's start with you on that. Well, I've seen those stores in, in China working in international, and I can tell you that you do see a lot of things, especially in the reptile area, that... Uh, that you wouldn't expect to see in a store here that people eat there. Mm. So it doesn't surprise me about donkey meat being popular. Uh, but this story, uh, Walmart is very committed to being successful in China. That's been, that's been mm. very obvious to me. Right. And to be successful in China, they have to deal with these issues which, are, which have come up about food safety, you know, infant formula and so forth. I'm confident <laughs> that they're going to do everything they can do to react to these kinds of issues and do the right thing well, because the, trust with their shopper is critical. And the, the government isn't making them do this, right? Doing the DNA testing and all the testing. They're doing it kind of on their own, right, to protect the, the customer. Although I got to tell you this story, donkey and foxes, I mean, it just doesn't really go with what, you know, what we got here in America. I mean, I, I, I've never well, heard Taco of donkey Bell, meat, you know, Taco Bell came under fire earlier or last year because they had horse meat in with some of their, and everybody threw a fit some of the ground beef. That's, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. I don't know if a horse may be better than donkey. I don't know. I never had either one of them. I haven't either. Right. What about you? When you were in China, did you? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I'm not <laughs> sure. You know, right. you're, not, I mean, you're not sure what you're eating sometimes. <laughs> and I guess people, when, even when they're shopping, don't know what they're getting. Yeah, it, it's not. I mean, it happens. It happens there. It's an issue. But you know, it could it could work out to their benefit. Walmart by doing that testing, mm -hmm. they're going to get the supplier con or the customer confidence Absolutely. to be able to shop at those stores that they, and they might even drive things through, throughout the country. You know, doing that kind mm -hmm. of testing to make sure that they're getting safer food, which so. may very well come here. Sure, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, another headline that made that was out this week, uh, coming out of Christmas, 
Uh, one, there was uh, Mashable.com recently posted some videos where somebody went into a store and they showed, I think it was five stores they went into, and they showed that Walmart really had an excess inventory mm -hmm. of some holiday things. In my experience, that's not unusual. You want to get customers in in January, so you, you overbuy intentionally. Right. In fact, I remember several times where if you had 84% sell through, considered you bought too little. Mm -hmm. Right, and as suppliers, I mean, if we can get to that 80, 85% sell through, you know, there's still 15% left over, but what does that 15% look like? I mean, you can walk into a store and see shelves that are full and think, oh my gosh, they've got way too much product left over, right. but it may, may have hit it right on the nose. You, you don't really know going into stores, I guess, is, is the thing. How, much, how many trailers did they have in the back, you know, that were stockpiled full of merchandise, and maybe this is all they got left over? So it's mm -hmm. kind of hard. I mean, I've I've seen the holiday merchandise. They have it in the outdoor area, and they also still have it in the store. But I I think the the interesting or the big news for suppliers is not uh, did they overbuy for on the holiday goods, but did they buy right for the holidays? Mm. And actually, right. what I see in the stores is that uh, I see, well what I don't see are is holiday merchandise that's been marked down with rollbacks trying to reduce their inventory because they overbought in general. Like TVs and yeah, things like right. that. For the holiday. Yeah. And the gift baskets you typically would see in, in uh, HBA, some yeah. of the holiday yes, appliances. Yes. If it's wrapping paper and decorations, yeah. I think that's expected. I mean, a couple of things that we had obviously working against them is shorter holiday season this year, mm -hmm. uh, only four weeks. Well, now, and the weather. And the weather was yeah. horrible. So to Ken's point, I think if, if you're setting heavy, them. yeah, Target did help. But I think if you're setting heavy on the decorations and the wrapping, you're not in a bad shape, especially as you've got bargain hunters that are going to be coming in in January when money's already oh, yeah, tight. Yeah, yeah. You're at least getting them in the stores, which driving traffic is one of the things that Walmart is, continues yeah. to kind of struggle with. So I don't, I don't see this really as a negative. Mm -mm. January, when that when we in, get the end of January and they have to start reporting inventory for end of year, it could come back and bite them. My guess is they had a good Christmas based on what I see in the stores right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, moving on to another topic. Walmart announced uh, recently that they're going to offer um, people who come in who've signed up for the Affordable Care Act, also known as Bob Obamacare, they're going to give them a 30-day script without proof of insurance. Andy, what's your take on I, this? I think that's great. I mean, you know, there's been so much news about this whole Obamacare and, and, and how it's going to work and people that, you know, lost their insurance, couldn't sign up. Um, I think it's a great move by Walmart to, mm -hmm. to do that and, and be able to offer that that trust with, with their customers that where they can come in and get their scripts. I, I think it's great. But yes. were they a little late, Ken? Well, uh, yeah, two, two things. Uh, one, uh, yeah, so Walmart wants to help people to yeah. save on their health care. But uh, to your point, uh, I believe that Walgreens announced the same thing uh, one day earlier. So, yeah, I think it's, I'm not surprised that Walmart would do this. It's the right thing to do. It, it helps their people. It brings health care at uh, lower cost, yes. But there's also a competitive reason why uh, why they did it. I, I would I would think. Right, they've got to keep up with them. Um, and you know, it's, uh, there was an interesting story I read this week about Walmart's healthcare, and we're going to get off topic too much. But their healthcare for their associates versus healthcare provided under the Affordable Care Act, much better process at Walmart, much better cost, and a lot of things. So it's good to see them mm -hmm. taking some of the same mm -hmm. things they're doing for their own associates and moving that out to everybody. So come in and get your 30 day script. Um, final story I wanted to talk about, uh, Credit Donkey had, a, it's a personal finance site, they released a, a story this week that listed Benton County, home of Walmart, home of several other companies, uh, as the number two place to be in the country, number two county behind mm -hmm. San Mateo County, which is obviously right in the middle of, of uh, Silicon Valley. So Ken, I'll start with you. Surprised by that? Um, not too surprising. I, you know, I've been in consumer products business now for 37 years. We moved eight times. Mm. Uh, this is a great place to live. Uh, our son went to junior high, high school here. It's it really is a, a great place to live, based on the, all the places that we've traveled and all the places that we've lived. Well, one oh, of the yeah. interesting things about the article, it also called out one of your companies, Glad, which is part of Clorox, as one of the the big manufacturers here. So, mm -hmm. Yes. There. Well, we we moved here in '98. Um, and, you know, like I think a lot of suppliers, we thought, okay, I'll put my two years in, in Arkansas and we'll get out. And, and I remember the first 
you know, the first couple of years we were here, we would always say, well, we're from Colorado, but we live in Bentonville, Arkansas, or, you know, Rogers, Arkansas. And so it took us a little while to get used to that, but, you know, we, we love this area. We raised our kids here. I've got a granddaughter that was just born. She, I had to get that in. She was just born, and she's also raised in this area, but we, we really do like it here. And, and I think that's what happens when people move into this, this area, whether they stay with the company they originally come with, or there's other opportunities for them with other companies. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it is a great place to live. Well, a couple interesting stats from the story. Uh, average wages in Benton County, just, um, just over $1,300 a week. Uh, wage growth, 14, just over 14%, and the employment growth, just under 3%. So some really strong mm -hmm. numbers. You compare that to number two, um, San Mateo County, just about $1,900 weekly salary. Mm -hmm. uh, but wage growth on par, and actually the employment growth is just a little bit bigger. So. Yeah. Great yeah. place to be. This has been the longest. So we moved eight times in 37 years, 16 years here. Wow. All right. Longest Guys, by far. Thank you very much. We're going to leave it there. Stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to talk with Vic Miles from Microsoft about some new things that Microsoft has for suppliers and small businesses. Saturday morning meeting continues. GigWalk is an on-demand mobile workforce that can collect data and do work at retail. Businesses use GigWalk for retail audits, merchandising, and much more. With 350,000 smartphone-enabled workers available on-demand, you get unprecedented speed and coverage across the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. And all work is reviewed for quality and accuracy. Visit GigWalk.com to learn more. New TV. Hi, TV. Did he just say hi to the TV? Uh-huh. Wait, is this Hulu from the computer Hulu? It's Hulu Plus. Uh, this looks cool. Which one of you yahoos put our TV on the curb? Oh, hello. What are we watching? Bathing monkeys. Uh, no, those are macaques. Get out of my seat. Looks relaxing. TV has never been better. This is Smart TV from Samsung. Bentonville Plaza. Across the street from the Walmart home office, the best office location for businesses working with the world's largest retailer. Bentonville Plaza offers proximity and services like no other business complex in the area, including custom designed suites and an on-site fitness center and restaurant. Pre-leasing opportunities are currently available for new construction. Call 479-200-1112 today. At 906 in Bentonville, do you know where your reps are? You could, and you should. Introducing MV Retail, the smart device driven, dashboard providing, you need to know the truth, and you need to know it now, team management system. Visit us online to learn more, because in the world of retail, wondering is bad, but knowing is good. You know, the biggest challenge of working with Walmart is they really expect everyone on the team to know their language, know their terminology, and know exactly how they do business. So that's where Ethan Walden really comes into play. You know, it's the fastest way to get my team members up to speed. Their business model is suppliers teaching suppliers. So when you come to Ethan Walton, you can count on having very experienced trainers who understand how suppliers work within Walmart, and they take advantage of that and incorporate that into their curriculum. Welcome back to Saturday Morning Meeting. We are joined now by Vic Miles. He is the retail or Director of Retail Technology with Microsoft. Vic, thanks for joining us. Spark recently came out with Walmart. Great application for a lot of those retail services, companies that are out there trying to get improve OSA for suppliers. Microsoft has a couple of things that they're working on that's going to expand that. Let's talk a little bit about that. So, uh, Derek, thanks for having me on the, uh, on the show. Um, one of the things that we're working on is around creating standards for retailers uh, to be able to share information like the Spark application um, across suppliers, right? And then additionally, to have suppliers be able to connect to a channel that all retailers would be on to be able to consume that same information back. So it's, a, it's an any-to-any -any kind of a platform that would allow the same kind of capability but across different retailers for suppliers. Which is good because if, if I'm using a retail service company and I've got them calling on Publix and Kroger and Target and Walmart, Spark works great for Walmart, but obviously it is a Walmart proprietary system. The, the problem that, often, that I often see is, and hear about from different suppliers is that you get all these multiple reports 
on different sure. retailers, and they may come in in different formats. They may come in, they may be consolidated, but by the time I get them, they're a week old at least, maybe a little bit older, because obviously that compilation has to happen. So what is, what's, how does Microsoft combat that? What are some things you're working on? So we have a uh, concept that, that I like to call cloud time. And cloud is really just a term that, that we use to say that it's, it's available from anywhere to anywhere at all times. And so it takes real time to another level. It says that whenever you want to consume information, you will get the latest information. And it, it takes away uh, what many suppliers are used to receiving, right, in, in the form of a, a batched report, right, where they get reports as of six o'clock yesterday and they try to right. make sense of it based on maybe some other real-time data they have. We're really looking at technologies that can make all of that information real time across all of the retailers that they serve. And yours is also, is not just unidirectional, it's a bi-directional communication platform as it, well. It certainly is uh, bi-directional. We think that, um, you know, the one-way broadcast communication where I send reports and I just wait and or I don't wait um, is, is sort of a thing of the past. And, and we want uh, the suppliers in store to be able to respond back, right? So if they see an issue that needs to be addressed, they can actually get real-time feedback on how to address that. Right, maybe they need approvals on changing, uh, changing spacings and that sort of thing, or moving items around. Um, any any number of sort of feedback, two-way communication uh, right. aspects that that can be done. Well, and I'm in the dry grocery side, and a couple of times we've gotten notes from a consumer through our website that says, "Hey, I was at the store and I bought your product; it was out of date." It's great for me to be able to log in and send a note to my retail services team and say, "I need you in the store." quickly because possible at more out of dates or out of stocks, even worse, because it's going to cost me some sales now. So that's a really kind of a great tool, I think, that you guys are developing. But And, and the good thing, too, is it's not just for one retailer. Yes. So how do you see this? Uh, what's the benefit? Obviously, suppliers can get on, get in on this, and it's a great tool for them to improve OSA. Let's go beyond just the reporting and the OSA. What are some other benefits that, that you can kind of see or foresee coming out of this platform? You know, when, when, uh, when we think about how best to help our uh, supplier customers who serve retailers, we think about this, this uh, phenomenon of showrooming, right? And what occurs in stores when a, a consumer goes into a store and, it, and feels disconnected from the brand. They can touch and feel the item, but they don't feel connected to the retail brand, and in some cases, not the item brand. And so we're working on a framework that would allow uh, education and content and media sharing uh, across the board such that you could start to connect consumers with uh, that retail brand. And it, it's, it's very simple sort of concepts to do, but being able to distribute and make that, that interaction with in-store associates consistent across the board is really where the, the tough part comes in. But again, we're working on a framework and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have a time a chance to look into that um, but working on a framework that would give a in-store associate all of the information that they need from various channels that's the probably the biggest innovation is taking that cloud system that I talked about right. and letting the supplier have a voice down to that last mile associate who's interacting with the shopper um, that voice may be in the form of a recipe Right, here's a recipe that was covered on CNN today that really should drive sales, you should know about it. Um, and even more importantly, being able to target that communication to the individual. And so that, and then having that individual respond back, that any to any is really what, what we're looking okay. to and in the power. When we come back, I want to talk about social media and the application to that. So we'll hang on to that thought. Sure. We're going to come right back. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Vic Miles from Microsoft on Saturday morning meeting. KStack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs, offers the supply chain expertise necessary to navigate the challenges of selling products to the world's largest retailers. KStack provides customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, KStack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. KStack, retail logistics is what we do. Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, we can help your business meetings get out of the box. Way, 
way out of the box. With refreshing views of the museum's 120-acre grounds, breathtaking architecture, spacious meeting and presentation venues, and top-notch catering from Eleven, our award-winning restaurant, not to mention more than 400 works of art by American masters, your meeting at Crystal Bridges will be anything but in the box. Call us today and let our team of professional event planners arrange your next meeting at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. If you notice, we're called the Razorback Nation. Razorback Nation. We eat, drink, and breathe Razorbacks. Aaron Peters, Alyssa Orange, Chris Fry, and Mike Irwin. If it's Razorback Sports, you're going to find it here. Nobody covers the hogs like we do. The Razorback Nation. Your one source for Razorback Sports. It's the state's largest sports team, the Razorback Nation. Broadway on Ice, a spectacular new concept for the theatrical stage. The best of Broadway with an international cast. Starring Broadway's Phantom of the Opera, Davis Gaines, and the internationally acclaimed Austrian singing sensation, Ira Lauren. An experience in theater you will not want to miss. Broadway on Ice. Everyone visualizes how amazing it would be to be an Olympian. It's the kind of thing you've dreamed about your entire life. When the Olympics come around, anything can happen. You try to go as big as you can. You have to be inspired. You have to be motivated. I'm going to be ready to go for Sochi. I am so excited to be headed to the 2014 Sochi Olympic Winter Games, bringing you exclusive coverage and representing Northwest Arkansas. It all begins February 6th, right here on KNWA. Welcome back to Saturday Morning Meeting, continuing our conversation with Vic Miles, the retail or Director of Retail Technology with Microsoft. Before we went to break, we were talking about social media, and social media is a very big deal. We had Data Rank on uh, last month talking about Black Friday and the importance of social media, kind of tracking what people are saying. But Microsoft has a whole different take on that. So it's not just the Facebook and the Twitter, the Instagram, where I'm posting something up there. There's a whole other side of the social media that can really help drive sales for retailers as well as suppliers. Yeah, that, that's right, Derek. What we uh, like to call it enterprise social. Um, and so what that means is that I want to be able to have as open and uh, organic of a conversation within my enterprise that enables people to share best practices, to, uh, to give kudos to individuals and to, to really just share across the board and have a dialogue, but within the context of uh, the enterprise. Uh, in, in the years past, that has felt sort of controlled and, and not like it, you know, normal social media where you didn't want to speak your mind. And retailers are really focusing on how do I get the same sort of uh, free and open sharing on my enterprise social so that everyone can benefit from it, most importantly the shopper, right. and, and still um, have it be somewhat confidential, if you will. So it's all contained within the system, almost like instant messaging. Yes. But store associates can, can share that, whether you're at a Target or Publix or Kroger. Now obviously you're not sharing across retailers, but if I'm in a Walmart in Florida and here's a great item that uh, maybe for Christmas, maybe for Easter since, or Valentine's Day, then here's, share that an associate in Minnesota can see the same thing. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, the example that we talked about uh, before the break was this recipe that gets shared on social media that then gets pushed down from a supplier into the, into the uh, retail environment. Uh, you know, in our vision, you would actually be able to send that to all of the retailers you serve, right, at the same right. time. And the people most uh, interested in that, that media, that content, could receive it, consume it, and then share it and have a dialogue about it. Um, maybe I would see that in my store, uh, the stock is low on that particular item and I wanna take action on that to be able to maximize sales. I could use that same media channel without alerting the, the public world that, hey, I don't have enough stock on this right. particular item. I'd use that same media channel to address that potential issue. And, and really, that's where you start to see the innovation is being able to get ahead of issues. So no longer being reactive, but using social to be proactive. And a great tool to help kind of do some cross merchandising. Uh, obviously, if you're building, making a recipe, here's a great idea for an end cap or a four way where you can bring several of those ingredients from different suppliers together. You're creating that one thing, but you also build your basket. 
which is really as a retailer, there are a couple of things I really want to do. I want to build my basket. I want to increase my trips. So a great tool here to help really build the basket. And it's not just in dry grocery. We're obviously talking about recipes, but there's that value added that you get into with electronics or you get in with toys or hardware where consumers can come in, I'm painting a room, what do I need? And it's all right there. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, the enterprise social really starts to drive uh, consumer or shopper loyalty. You know, in the research that we've done, we see that shopper loyalty is at an all-time high. What's different is that our shoppers are really, um, they're really selective about who they give their loyalty to. And that loyalty generally comes with a connection, either with the brand, with the in-store associate, with the retail brand. You know, you, it's not enough to have price and, and, and availability anymore. And so being able to uh, talk consistent with what you see on the, the internet, right, whether you have right. reviews and having a consistent message where you have that, that 18 to 26 year old who I like to think about as the in-store associate talking to customers, giving the same message that they would have gotten on the retailer's website, saying that here are the items and here are the distinct differences about these items and here's the one that I think fits you. But yeah, based on what you've told me, based on what the customer said, here's the one that best fits. And it, it really helps to establish that connection yes personal connection, which brings them back time and time again. Yes. It's that personal connection that really will uh, drive consumer loyalty and really combat showrooming uh, right where it starts in the store. Okay, and then you are off to NRF next week in New York. Yes, absolutely. The National Retail Federation. Should be a lot of interesting things come out of there and hopefully you'll have some, some good results with this. Yeah, NRF is, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, billed as the big show. It is our big show as well. well Microsoft will have a very large presence uh, we, we hope that you and all the viewers will come out and see us at, uh, in New York City. Okay. Vic, thank you very much. And when we come back, we will continue with Saturday Morning Meeting. I would recommend Eighth and Walton to other suppliers because from my experience talking to other suppliers, they were even learning new ideas or just new and better business practices. Most people have little time for training, and so Eighth and Walton is a perfect opportunity to send your new employees to understand the retailing system. And again, because trainers were suppliers, they know the how and the why, so they become very valuable very quickly. Stay tuned to KNWA and Fox 24 for two of the biggest TV events of 2014. First, the big game airs on Fox 24 February 2nd. Then, get ready for the Sochi Winter Games February 6th on KNWA. When the weather changes, your life changes. And that's why we're always tracking and monitoring the weather. And when it does get bad, we'll let you know about it, protecting the people that you care about. Northwest Arkansas's weather can change in a moment's notice. So when it does become severe, we'll be on air and online with your family safety as our number one priority. Dan Scoff, Gina DeVecchio, and Clint Boone. The meteorologists of the Northwest Arkansas Weather Authority, proudly serving Northwest Arkansas. Join us for Saturday Morning Meeting, featuring experts and headlines that focus on the insights, trends, and best practices to help suppliers grow their business. On February 8th, 15th, and 22nd, catch Saturday Morning Meeting on Fox 24 at 9.30 p.m. The 2014 Sochi Olympics begin February 6th here on KNWA. Don't miss a minute of our exclusive coverage as I travel to Russia to bring you the Olympics. I want to thank Vic Miles for taking the time to join us as well as our panel. And a special thank you for you for taking the time to watch. We'd love to hear from you. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please email us Saturday at EighthAndWalton.com. And make plans to join us next week. We're going to be joined again by Vic Miles live from the NRF, the National Retail Federation show, the big show for retailers and suppliers that is happening in New York City this week. Make plans to join us next week. And for all of us here at Ethan Walton Saturday Morning Meeting, I'm Derek Ridenauer. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next Saturday morning.